And welcome back to Jacob Media YouTube channel here on a Wednesday. Barrett Brooks and Harry Mays. And uh, 1130, second half hour of the show. We're going to start it off with uh, one of our top five guests, according to our stream. Uh, they like to rank the guests. He was and, a little pissed off because of that. Remember that? Well, he was in the top 10, but I think he's moved up into the top five, and he's always in my top three, okay? I mean, this is a go-to guy. He's a content machine, and he is the editor-in-chief of one of the best websites uh, for Philadelphia sports you'll ever get, which is crossingbroad.com. Kevin Kincaid joins us. Are you wearing a soccer shirt? No, no, I'm, I'm representing my guys. Oh, West Virginia. Okay, yeah. yeah hey, I, man, I thought they, I thought they hung yeah. tough with Oklahoma this week. Amazing collapse uh, against yeah. Oklahoma. You know, we were driving down for the game-winning field goal. Then our uh, center uh, committed a snap infraction, hmm. and then on the very next play, he snapped the ball early. So we took a 21-yard loss, uh, punted it back to Oklahoma, and they came down for the game-winning score. So. Uh, but I'm not surprised. And when you don't have expectations, Harry, you can't be disappointed. <laughs> so. You know, I, 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 did the, um, I did the Long Island at West Virginia game uh, oh, you know, a weeks couple ago, weeks man. ago. Yeah. yeah. So I was down there. Bro, that that place there. Whew, I'm surprised you guys can live out there, man. You know, it's, yeah. it's woods and all that stuff. What, what you got going on? That? What you guys do for fun? Burn couches. Yeah, not a whole, not a whole lot, man. Was... <laughs> but that was like, the beautiful. Yo. That was the beautiful thing, Barrett. Is that like you didn't, um, you know, the people there were um, uh, very easygoing. I guess would be a polite way to right, say it. Right, you know, right, because right. there's not a there's not a whole lot going on, so you can't really be stressed out and high strung. You know, it's just a lot of hanging out and uh, drinking some beers and uh, spending time with people. And it was a different. Um, it was a different pace of life, I would say. Mm -hmm. I could definitely but, understand that, man. But as hey, he's, ex as he's experiencing now, because since he moved out to the suburbs a little while ago, too. Yeah, so, yeah, all yeah. right. Now, you had a, had a request today. So I want to get this right out of the way, because I can oh, tell yeah. it's very important to you, hmm. uh, that you, you need to explain to the folks what exactly an RPO is. <laughs> okay. okay. So listen, this is something that's been kind of bothering me for a couple of years now. And the, the relevance of this, Harry, is that... Uh, you know, obviously everybody's killing Nick Sirianni for, you know, the lack of of running that took place the other night. And in his explanations post game, he said, look, I, you know, we do have to run the ball more. You know, Miles Sanders has to get more touches. Obviously, everybody knows that. But at the same time, you know, some of the passing plays that you see end up on the game sheet, you know, maybe the call that came in from the sidelines was run pass option. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I, I think we have this struggle uh, at a macro level of understanding that what shows up on the box score um, you know, isn't necessarily may maybe what came in from the sidelines or there's multiple ways it can go. You know, if you call 60 plays a game and, and 60 of them are RPOs, but the quarterback decides to pass the ball 50 times because that's what the defensive end has given him. It's not because they didn't choose to run. It's because that's what was given to him. Right. So I think what happens and Barrett can, can back me up on this is that, um, I don't, I think people are confusing, uh, you know, zone read. Um, and any kind of option play where the quarterback pulls the ball after reading a defensive end or a linebacker or something, they, they're lumping these all together and they're calling them RPOs as run pass option. But not every play that involves reading a defensive end or pulling the ball even has a passing component to it. You, know, you, can, have, you can have zone read where I'm the quarterback, I'm looking at the defensive end. If he collapses on the running back, I'm pulling it and running. If he stays at home, I'm just going to hand it to Miles Sanders. This is bread and butter, Rich Rodriguez, Chip Kelly, Pat White, Dennis Dixon stuff. Mm -hmm. You went back there. Test. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I mean, is am I wrong though? Isn't that where the kind of like spread yeah, off? Yeah, it all came zone, from the co zone, college you know, game. Yeah. Now I'm talking to two other college football guys right now. Right. And there are not a lot of them in the Philadelphia region. So my theory has always been, I don't think Philadelphia – sports fans necessarily watch a ton of college football compared to people in other parts of the country. So when RPO started as a college thing and then came into the NFL, I don't know if people had a full grasp of it, you know? So I think people mm -hmm. need to understand that not every, every time you see the quarterback pull the ball, there's not always a passing component to it. The, the receivers are running dummy routes yep. where the line, the linemen are three yards blocking downfield and that's block. That's if you even pull the ball and throw it, they'd be flagged for being illegally downfield. Right. There's lots of problems. Yep. This, this is why Barrett, this is why Pat Fitzgerald came out like two years ago or whatever it was, and he called the RPO communism. 
right? Or like the purest <laughs> form of communism or whatever, because they were able to blur the lines in the college game because they can go three yards, you know, before they get that flag. Yeah. Right. So it's harder to execute in the NFL. But I think it's I think the the, the bottom line is that because people don't understand it completely, it's adding to, it's it's lowering the discourse when we talk about how many times did they pass the ball, how many times did they run the ball, what play is coming in from the sidelines, you know, what did he audible to, what did he read. So I, I think it just helps fans in general if they kind of have a better understanding of what they're looking at. Right. You know, what he's saying is, you know, when you see – when you hear RPO, when he's reading the defensive end or RPO can also read the linebacker, mm-hmm. if the linebacker scoots over a little bit, then he'll throw to the backside to to a receiver. If he doesn't, he read it, he hands it off to the running back. Mm-hmm. I understand all and I told him, but, damn it, I just want him to say, look, we're going to run power. We're going to run 37 power. We're going to run it between the tackle and, yeah. the, and the guards, double team block front side, pull the back side, go out the middle, and three yards in a cloud of dust. I want those run plays. I want to see some draw plays. Run draw <laughs> plays. If you got guys screaming up the field like they had them, run a draw player too to you know make them honest. You know you have to run plays in which they – Dallas did it them. to the Eagles. Right. That's what I'm they saying. They so, draws. So and that's how you make that's why you that's how you make them honest. That's why you that's how you make them an honest defense. Because if you don't, you're just gonna pin their ears back. And because just like the casual fan won't know what an RPO is, the defense won't know what an RPO is because they're not gonna respect it. They're yeah. gonna want to stop the run. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's all they're thinking about is get up the field and and, and and rushing the passer. They're not even thinking about that run, um, that run fake. So that's the problem. We need all right, we're gonna line up underneath center. And we're gonna blow you off the ball. I want to see you stop it. Yeah, just like they did to us. And Barrett, how many linemen will tell you that they love pass blocking seventy five percent? Right, none, none, none. none. except none. for Dillard. <laughs> Nobody except right. Andre yeah. Dillard. He's the yeah. only one to say no. Pass yeah. it. I want to pass it. And in, no. and in in like a macro level thing too, you talk about power running and you know getting between the tackles and and, and whatnot. Um, you know, the bottom line is that it, RPOs or, or, or not, or even using the screen game as an extension of the running game, Miles Sanders still isn't touching the ball enough. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can, you can par- parse it any way you want, but if he's right. only running it twice and catching the ball three times, five touches is not enough for Miles Sanders. He was getting like 10 a game last year, and we were still saying it wasn't enough. Yeah. Bro, so, I can remember yeah. Andy Reid went into a game, and only he only passed the ball, I mean, ran a ball 11 times, and this city was – outraged they were they were ready to 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 to, to tar and feather them yeah but here yeah. we let somebody just run it three times i don't care you know with rpo or not you have to get one of your best players one of your most explosive players more touches why by any means necessary and i know? think it's important too that I, I my observations i don't know if you guys agree with this or not but my observation of the eagles offense over the first three weeks is that it seems very boom or bust mm-hmm. yep. to me which is to say they're trying these these passes downfield, um, you know, they have receivers who are a little smaller, but a little speedier. You know, you don't, you know, we you just know, talked about that. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, yep. you know, um, great minds. Right. 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 Small, think of, think you know, our, small. I mean, I understand yeah. small speed. We wanted more speed on the team. Yeah. But you, you listen, listen, Hertz's this is my, deep ball isn't great, though, either. It's underthrown. <sighs> No, he's like he looks like he's like trying to finesse it down the field mm-hmm. instead of kind of yep. driving it, letting guys get behind him, and they have to slow up and, and back up on it. And um, you know, I remember watching Jalen. I had the privilege of watching Jalen Hurts beat the absolute tar out of us in person mm. uh, a couple years ago. I went, college, I went out yeah. to yeah, because my dad and I are doing this thing where we we try we're trying to go to all the Big Twelve road games. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. So it's like, when the hell else am I going to be in like Texas or Oklahoma or something? So let's go do these these road trips and check out these. So stadiums, you went to right? Norman. We yeah. went to Norman. That was the game where the Sooner uh, wagon fell over. Oh, no. The Sooner schooner. Yeah. You turned on. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> yeah, we saw it in person. Yeah, we, wow. we were there in the in the stadium. That was uh, uh, one of the most jarring sporting moments I've ever seen. But everybody. Yeah. Was- <laughs> it doesn't take curves very well, the schooner. No, you know? it's not, it, there's not a lot. There's not great handling. You know? No. It's like, you know, it's like <laughs> me driving my truck around Sellersville and then I get in my wife's car. You know, it's a lot right. different. But um <laughs> Uh, but listen, there was a point in here somewhere. I think that I was trying to make. Um, <laughs> Jalen no, Hurts. J- Jalen Hurts. Yeah, listen. I, you know, I, I Barrett. I don't. I don't have to tell you. Like, I, I um, am a Big Twelve guy because my team's in the Big Twelve. But I hate Big Twelve football. Like, I just cannot stand Big Twelve football because there's a lot of like rush three, drop eight. You know, mm-hmm. zone coverage. And West Virginia for the longest time has run this like three three five goofy 
stack with like a yeah, bandit that's the, line yeah, back that's the norm now. Yep. And that's, that's the, norm. the norm. But because of that, like Jalen, Jalen Hurts never like we never had great film of him in college, like kind of like climbing into the pocket, you know, going through his progressions and you know, going to receiver number two or three or whatever like that. And you know, guys he, he was using his legs and getting free and he was finding guys who were wide open. Right. C D Lamb. CD Lamb yeah. and dudes like yeah. that, you know. So <laughs> like he's still doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So there's not so I think that when the Eagles are playing this like boomer bust kind of like high risk uh high reward kind of game, you know, you go three and out and, and your defense is back on the field in the last two games, they've been out time of possession like thirty five to twenty five, which yep. is insane. You go back to the Doug Peterson, you know, Super Bowl year, I think they were the number two time of possession team in the NFL. And that was a hallmark of what they were doing because the defenses right. were just grinding down other offenses and they're just losing the balance game right now. Which was the anti-Chip Kelly. Yes. Yeah. You know, it was more about plays than time of possession. Plays right. run. Yeah. 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 But they don't, there's no fit. Right. And you look at what the Cowboys are doing. They're just chewing you up like yep. four or five yards at a time. Then you get a run of like six and you find yourself in like second and four. And the play and sheet is at your disposal with that, you know, with those yeah, kind of down and distance. Yeah. yeah. And then it opens yeah. up the pass because now you have to put another defender in the box to stop the run, which mm -hmm. opens up the pass, what you want to do. And we came into this season thinking, all right, our offensive line is a top three offensive line. You know, when they're healthy, they're top three. No question about it. But yet we don't use them the way you, you want to use them. You run the ball. Um, and now you only you have, have two fifths of them, of them in there. So now you really now have you got to run three the ball backups. You, yeah. yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to have have your 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 you know two guards that are not finesse guards. These are pass blocking guards. These are road graders. You know, Lana Dickinson is a is a road grader. You know, uh, Herbig is a road grader. There's nothing finesse about either one of those guys. You got one guy suspenders. You got another guy that looks like he's off of Super Mario. Um, a uh, turtle, you know, that's in, right there at guard. Mm -hmm. You want both of those guys coming off the rock, initiating contact, hitting somebody in the mouth. You don't want them dropping back, man. And that's the problem. You got them pass blocking. They're not built for that, bro. They're not. Yeah, it's funny that. too because you know if they get decimated even more, then you go to Brett Toth, right? Who probably mm -hmm. has <laughs> pass pass blocked like ten times in his college that army. Career, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Running like I, the old Paul the Paul Johnson like triple option there, or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> All right, I saw on crossingbroad.com today's Mount Rushmore got my attention. <laughs> the dumbass Derek Barnett penalties. And you yeah. listed the four of them, starting with the one in Green Bay a couple of years ago on that night yeah. game when they actually won that game. I think that was the game that they ran the football quite well. And Dougie P got questioned in his Tuesday meetings with the ownership and the analytics department as to why he ran the damn ball so much. Yeah. And Doug must have been – that might have been the start of the whole thing, of the downslide. We're like, what? I just won the football game on the road at Lambeau, and you're questioning the play calls. But right. anyway, that was one – I was remember Jordan, that penalty. A Jordan Jamal Howard Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, you, it's funny because, like, you would need uh, – man, if you're trying to whittle down Derek Barnett, dumbass penalties to just four i mean like it's that's a process man you you would if you're, if you're doing a mount rushmore of uh you need like the entire himalayas right, know, to, right. to car, car i need more off. mountain yeah you need you need right. to do the out the swiss alps you know uh, but how about the coach he, was was caught on camera mouthing uh something it's always him yeah yeah saying it's always him i i you know it's been a thing with him it, it's not a new phenomenon he's no, been doing no. that from day one and Look, like some stuff, like I know that the rules have changed in the NFL where like you can't do anything to a quarterback now if you fall on top of him with his body weight or if you contact to the head or anything like that. There are a lot of iffy, you know, calls that you could kind of say, eh, I'm not so sure about that. But with Derek Barnett, yeah, no, the line is not blurred. Like he's just hitting guys late. And yep. He's hitting he's hitting dudes who are not even like involved in a play. Um, well, he's on the, the sideline. The guy's on the sideline yeah, next to yeah. another guy on the sideline, standing there looking at a guy that's on the sideline, and he still hits him. My yeah. favorite thing about the Jamal Williams play from two years ago is that they have him – Green Bay's like on their 15-yard line. They're kind of backed up. And I think Fletcher Cox was around him. Another guy was coming over. They're pushing him back towards the end zone. Barnett's coming from the opposite way. Like you right. got him backed up. You're pushing him back. You're going to hit him forward. Like just let right. – you know. Yeah. It's just there's not a lot up here, and it's like yeah. – uh, you know, before they they 
I, you know, I guess they gave him the restructure thing where they kicked the can down the road with the dummy years or whatever the contract, but, before, you know, coming into it, he was like one of the highest earners on the team, mm-hmm. like, like $10 million before they did that restructure for him. So, you know, with Josh Sweat, uh, you know, getting his extension and I guess being a guy for the future, like how, do you, how, do you, bring, how do you bring Barnett back? Like what, yeah. what have you seen, you know? No, I totally agree. Yeah. We, we haven't heard much about those uh, Reggie White comparisons uh, when he was at Tennessee, oh, breaking yeah. Reggie's sack record right, and right. all that stuff. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, Derek Barnett um, fell on the fumble that won the Eagles their first Super Bowl ever. So we can put it, we can give him his, you know, uh, you know, mo- that that moment forever, whatever, you know, and he can uh, put him in the pantheon, right? But mm-hmm. uh, beyond that, it's just, you know, it's another first round draft pick who, uh, you know, hasn't 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 lived up to it, you know? All right. Now, this the stream is obsessed with your drum videos, which I happen to say I'm a fan of, too. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I love yeah. the one, the Red Barchetta, the Rush song that you did mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. But the yeah. stream wants to know what kind of symbols, what are, what. What what kind of a symbolsman are you? What what do you use? You a well, Zildjian I'm, man? Oh no, I play um, well y- yeah on my um, my acoustic kit, but in all the videos I'm playing an electronic kit. Right. So right. you know you got your like rubber pads and and stuff, and uh, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like Harry. It's like the greatest purchase of all time because when I was living in the city, you put that up in your like uh, second floor, something like that. You can bang on them at like three in the morning, and nobody hears it. Yeah, yeah. Because how else you get it? Like, we, you, we used to do these band practices back in the day where it's like we'd have to like rent out like a mo- we, my my band in Georgia. We used to practice at like a motorcycle repair shop mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere in Augusta, Georgia. Because where else can you make loud music? You know the, the electronic right. kits were not what they are so um yep. you know it's all e-kit stuff playing through the headphones you know i did i did some uh i did some rat mm-hmm. for the yeah, Twitter saw, followers. was yeah, it we, round and round, round it was round that one yeah. yeah yeah we did some uh green day some no effects so i'm i'm uh i'm taking requests you know oh yeah, want to hear. yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. Well, i'm sure i'm sure yeah. somebody on the stream will, will put one of those in there but yeah, I, think I, 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 t- I think i took i think somebody wanted an, an iron maiden song so i did an iron maiden song so i'm i'm here um for the for people, the people, right? yeah, yeah. We, well, you know, we we know that. That's why we love you. Now, uh, give me your thoughts on the whole Ben Simmons situation. As we have now rolled past media day for the Sixers, so that means the season is really right around the corner. What a mid October, I think, or October twenty second, maybe. So yeah. it won't be it won't be too long. What what's your take on the latest? Yeah, talk about a day to come back from paternity leave, right? Um, yeah. Sixers media day, and then the Eagles getting their doors blown off by the Cowboys. It's like <laughs> happy Monday, uh, and yeah. then Jalen Hurts drops the the poop quote or whatever. Oh know? yeah, so I was up at two in the morning yes. with my newborn. I'm like delirious. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> um, the Ben Simmons thing. Look, I, I think you know if you go back to like the two hours of media day, I think there was kind of a um, a theme that was repeated uh, by the players and, and the coaches and the GM. Is it's sort of like uh, they seem to suggest that playing and Philadelphia is a little bit different than playing elsewhere. Um, some people are built for it mm-hmm. and some people are not. And, um, you know, if you're going to say that some people aren't built for playing in a certain place, can we interpret that to mean that they're soft? Mm-hmm. There's no interpretation uh, I, to it. I, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, if it I mean, walks like yeah. a duck, yeah. talks like a duck, I mean, it quacks like a duck, it swims like a duck, it's a damn duck. <laughs> well, and Joel and B. Drugstore Kyle. Yeah, and Joel Embiid gets it. He's like, look, I, I you know, because I asked him and and Danny Green, because you know they made the comments over the summer about, you know, asking the fans to be better or let up or qu- kind of whatever that was. I said, can you guys elaborate on that and kind of explain what you were talking about? And Embiid said straight up, he's like, look, I I get it. I like I understand that like all you got to do is is play hard and and um, you know give everything you got, and these fans will love you, you know. Mm-hmm. And he he said, I just don't want that to extend. To, you know, we're trying to bring in a free agent, or we got a max contract slot or something, and people see this reputation and they don't want to come. Yeah. You know, so that confirms him saying that that some players say, Hey, I'm like wary yeah. of coming to Philadelphia. You know, we know it's it's BS because the the default behavior for all these guys is unconditional support. Mm-hmm. Mike Mike Scott. That's where like, it starts. Yeah. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. Yeah. Markel yeah. Fultz. Yep. Ben Simmons. Yeah, thoracic outlet syndrome, shooting three pointers, the Mike Scott hive. You got people walking around with Tyrese Maxey Twitter avatars when the guy hasn't done anything yet. Mm-hmm. So don't don't tell don't let anybody tell you that Philly is a certain way when the default behavior is unconditional support, especially for the Sixers, which is a fan base that trends a little bit younger, mm-hmm. a little bit more politically progressive, right. which lends itself to the fact of 
younger people, I think, are more empathetic in mm-hmm. general to players and, and are going to be more reasonable about knowing where the line is and where not to cross it. Yeah. You know, don't jump into these guys' DMs on Instagram. Don't do this. Which we're like, mm-hmm. arbitrarily, they know kind of where to start and where to stop. Whereas I think some, you know, older fans are more uh, predisposed to, you know, complain about it or call up the radio mm-hmm. or rip this guy or whatever. Yeah. So it's an interesting, you know, dynamic in that sense where you, then you, you look at the other side and you take a guy like Kevin Durant. Who's who doesn't like dealing with the criticism? He'll fire back at people. Burner accounts, yeah, yeah. And we could say that he's soft mm-hmm. in a yeah. way, but he's right. a friggin' killer on the court, you know. So right. I, I think it's, I think but it's. You hit it right there. You hit it right there. I mean, Kev, that's what it is. I mean, you could be as soft as you want, you know, off the court or whatever. But if you're giving us a quality product, if you're giving us yeah. your all. Yeah, and 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 you and you you doing it the right way. We don't care. We and anybody else can say. I mean, we can say whatever we want about, it, but let somebody else say something about you. You know, mm-hmm. we're all in on just you know crucifying them. But, if you're yeah, giving right. us your all, we're gonna give you everything. We're gonna let you walk over us. But then, but don't, but don't talk shit to us, man. Don't don't do that. <laughs> You know no, the man? funniest thing, you, you know what I like is when like everybody talks about what it means to be quote unquote a Philly guy or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um Blue none collar. of these guys, none of these dudes are from Philly. Mm-hmm. Right. Like right. your starting five is a dude from Cameroon. There's a dude from Australia. Right. You know, so it, it's it's it can be learned behavior. You know, it's not it's not innate. Like right. the only, the only team, the only team in the city that has people who are actually from here is, is is the union because they're pulling kids through the academy. Right, right, right. But everybody else is drafted from you know Devonte Smith comes up from like Alabama or whatever. You know, so Fletcher Cox comes from Mississippi. Carson Wentz, you know, now is with his people or whatever. Right, in, his in people. Indian. So, <laughs> it, so that's so it's you know it's all like he's with his people where he can go seventeen for thirty eight, a buck seventy four with no yeah. touchdowns, no interceptions, yeah. and a loss, and it's okay. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You only got, you know, Greg uh, D- Doyle or whatever, you know, ripping oh, yeah. in, Indy yeah. Star or whatever. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I just think it's, it's, it's not, I, again, I think the Philly fan thing is totally overrated. Uh, I think you go to a lot of cities, especially in the Northeast, and the same thing would happen. You know, if Ben mm-hmm. Simmons was in, in New York City, Boston, Spike, Spike yeah. Lee would be ripping him. Yeah, Boston, right. where they threw the bottle at, uh, you know, Kyrie when he came back Utah with the racist fans you know yeah. the worst thing that happened in Philadelphia uh, this recent season was a guy dumped a popcorn on somebody's head mm-hmm. so you know that's not uh, acceptable but when you compare it to what everybody else was doing we're, we weren't any there wasn't anything happening here that was any worse than anywhere else all right let me get your take on the Manning cast now that they've done three games I don't know if you watched any of that for the Eagles game but I, I think you might have ducked in for maybe one of the first two what's your take on that do you have any I loved it. Me too. Yeah, yeah I loved it. Yeah. It's funny because I turned on the game with my wife when she's she's holding our two week old, and she's like, at the first minute, she's like, "What is what is this? I don't know what this is." And then like <laughs> Eli cracked a joke about Manning, and then my wife was hooked. Right, right. Like, two <laughs> seconds, and she's loving it. Yeah, they know? break each other's balls all the they time. They break each other's balls, but it, but in addition, Harry, it's like you get um, you know the old segue from that into explaining like a uh, Tampa two robber, mm-hmm. you know. And yep. so, like, that's the stuff that you don't get. And I, I, I don't, I like Lou Riddick, and I, I love Lou Riddick. Greasy Gre- yeah. does a good job too. Yeah, Riddick, who's a local guy. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, a Pittsburgh Panther, but uh, right, Qu- right. Quaker Town guy. Um, I, I just like how how you. I feel like I learn more when I'm watching Eli and Peyton. But then you get that kind of comic relief mm-hmm. at the same time, and they bring in the guests in the middle of it, which is cool. The only thing is that I don't, I don't, I don't feel like. Um, you know, if you're if you're like looking for like an explanation, of like a penalty or like a replay or a review or something like that, or trying to pay attention to what's going on on the field, like you're not you're not getting those explanations right. from them because they're just sort of riffing mm-hmm. and talking. So I found myself kind of um, you know going back and forth a little bit, like when something important was happening on the field, like when when uh, Dak was trying to reach the ball mm-hmm. over the goal line, they were like going through that. You know, Peyton and and Eli were just like blah blah blah. So you f- you find a different uses for each of the each right. of the broadcasts. I, like, really? I like the time. I like the way they way they. You know, they they're interacting and 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 like you could tell that Manning, you know, he 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 really um he hates when quarterbacks don't yes do what they're supposed to do. Yes, you know, he's he's talking about, like, you talking about Peyton. 
Yes. Yeah, Peyton. I'm sorry. He I gets man. pissed. He Peyton, gets upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it, ins- it insults his football <laughs> sensibilities, yeah. man. Right. He's just like, what do you do? Like when McCarthy didn't call timeout, he was like yelling at him to, to call timeout. When he didn't, he's just he sits back like, oh my god, I couldn't. Yeah. Believe- How dare you not call timeout there? But that, right. that, that, that leads you that that's a, a rare you know foray into like the mind of of a Super Bowl winner, you know, and right. a former Pro Bowl, and it's an like, all timer. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I, I get, I just put, you know, look, there's nothing profound to say here, but I just put a ton more value and what people like that have to say yeah you know and that's right. why when i when you hear like you know you hear all the crap that was coming out about carson wentz last year the thing that i paid most attention to was malcolm jenkins on chris long's podcast because mm. these dudes played with them they're nfl players they're probably right. they know what they're talking about so some things just hold more weight than others and that's why i thought um you know eli and peyton provided a lot of value in what they had to say yeah chris long was on the other night i don't know if you caught he that he was pretty good yeah i also like too how saban was talking about going no huddle yeah and then on the very next play they went no huddle and they mm-hmm. scored a touchdown so. yeah all right one last thing here for kevin because uh, uh, shander's not on today he he had a it was a late scratch um but he's annoyed with you apparently mm. because you haven't been chronicling on crossing broad all of his new jobs yeah, that he has yeah, picked up yeah. over the last couple of weeks before football season. Yeah, like, so, like we have, like we haven't given Aton enough uh, <laughs> press with his forty-seven jobs before that. <laughs> you need like, like was, another <laughs> part of the website to keep track of him, right? Like separate... like he, he gets his own drop-down menu, like yeah. you know, <laughs> Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, Aton, right. every job Aton got this week. I felt like every week I was just dropping a different press release for him. You know, <laughs> he does. He does know, right, that I just had a kid like two weeks ago. I, so I don't know here. if he knows. Okay, I mean, he's, so I'm you know, in, yeah. anybody that follows you on social media knows yeah, that. Okay. But well, listen, know. I, you know, I, maybe I'm not going to, he, he would be sitting here with Teddy right now doing, uh, he would. Yeah. His kid. <laughs> exactly. Um, other, others of us do take paternity leave. So, right. Um, right. You know, if, he, if he has a, uh, if he has a new job that he wants to share, he knows, he knows where my inbox is. Okay. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> See, he doesn't like the fact that he would have to reach out to you. You're supposed to know this. And, and just act on it yourself, right? Well, that's what I know about him. He's his, yeah. His, it's very simple for him. It's like, well, Kincaid is the media reporter, uh, right? Right. And I'm in the media, right? There, therefore, you know, it, you know, a connects to B or whatever. But look, I mean, yeah, I got a two year old, I got a two week old. Um, you know, I, I watched Frozen about forty times last week. You know, I'll, I'll tell, I saw that on your tell, on your Twitter. Yeah, tell yeah. Aton that I'll get. I'll you know I'll I'll. He'll get around to it. Yeah. yeah. At Kevin underscore Kincaid. So how is it now with number two? Is it, was it any different? Um, There's just more, you know, it's like, if you had any free time before, you have none now. None. Right. Because once you get the two year old situated, it's like, oh, now I got a two week old. Mm -hmm. So, wow. um, Well, congratulations. Thanks. Listen, I always say if you, um, if you signed up for something willingly, then you can't complain about it. Right, right, right. right. Well, right. I, 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 my my question, man. I only have one question for you. Do you change the shirts like you know they change them? Sick uh, Nick Sirianni does. Do you change their, you know, <laughs> whatever's on their shirt? Beat Dallas. You know, are they gonna have a beat Chief shirt on, man? <laughs> the, what are they're, they're, doing? <laughs> they're, what are they doing? The, Barrett, they're gonna be in um, whatever is clean that's like not laying <laughs> on the ground. Whatever my wife was able to get into the, uh, you know, the dryer the other day. You know, so no, I'll just say that's like it, it, the vibe of that is like college basketball, mm-hmm. where like they all wear the matching, like you know, they come up with your stupid slogan mm-hmm. before the season, and everybody's got to wear the dumb shirts. It right. just uh, I'm not as big into the Harry High School thing with Nick Sirianni as other people are, but that kind of. Now, why you got to go Harry High School? Why can't you go Henry High School or something? Aton High School. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right. what what? Uh, I'm surprised Crossing Broad isn't selling any of these T-shirts and capitalizing on all this. Kyle's out of the T-shirt game, man. Harry, you know, yeah. he's on bigger and better things right now. He's like the sports gambling uh, right. maestro, you know? So when's, I, it, when's, uh, the, when's the Crossing Broad Casino going to open up? Oh, right, God, right. I That's mean, what prob- I want to know. Uh, probably sooner rather than later. You know, we just, we just had, uh, we actually just had a uh, meeting with the company um, a short time ago and crossing broad uh, is doing very well in the, uh, in the sports betting space. As mm-hmm. they like to say. I love and that so, word uh, space. Yeah. yeah. And that's a great word. It's yeah. Synergy, synergies, right. spacing. I uh, just figured know. out what, uh, what empathy means in, in the last 12 or 18 months. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, catch me up on space. 
Hey, listen, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you any corporate buzzword you want to hear. We will underpin the conversation. With, Maybe that's uh, in another uh, cro- uh, Mount Rushmore of corporate buzzwords. Yes. Uh, um, synergy is definitely up there. Yep. Um, vertical, I think would you would put up there as well, too. We have to, mm-hmm. you know, our, our uh, vertical strategy here. Right. Uh, <laughs> underpin is a great word. Yeah. You know, what does that I, mean, actually? That uh, sounds I like a wrestling term. Uh, yeah, it's a, it sounds like a like a UFC submission or something. Yeah, like that. right. Um, <laughs> you know. By the way, I just want to shout out um, Chris Dawkins, Philadelphia cop. He okay. Was four four and zero oh in the UFC. Wow. He's got, a, he's got a main event coming up in December against Derek Lewis, who just fought for the title. So. Oh yeah. We have Philly has a bona fide like top ten. UFC guy now in the promotion, and he's um, he's got he, some tats too, doesn't he? He's been a Philadelphia police officer since 2010, and he goes and trains wow. in Northeast Philly after his shift or whatever. And then he just goes and knocks guys out. So, yeah, what's, uh, what's his name again? Chris Dawkins. Yeah, and his okay. brother Kyle. They're both they both went to uh, oh my god, what's the Catholic high school in like Mayfair that's no longer there, like North uh, North, Cat- North, or Catholic North Catholic or something? Or something. Or, yeah, they're yeah. both local guys from Northeast Philly and they're both in UFC now, but they fought on the local circuit for a while, Atlantic city, Philly, Ben Salem or whatever. So now both, both of the brothers are in UFC and they're doing really well. Chris fought on Saturday and Kyle fights this coming Saturday. So, um, and Chris, Chris got into the top 10 now, so they're going to give him some of the best, uh, the best heavyweights that are out there. Yeah. So. Apparently he's number seven now in the heavyweight division, according to your piece, yeah. right? Yeah, there's now, some M- there's some MMA talk for you. How about Harry, that on on the middle? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Now, how, how do you pronounce the guy's name that he beat? So like a Abdura <laughs> Kimov. That sounds like a soccer, yeah. like almost like a soccer name. Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, Shamil Abdurikimov. Right. Um, he's one of those Dagestan guys, Harry, who they just have the crazy like wrestling, and he, he's like he kind of. I think he's from the same area that Khabib is from. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. So all those Russian guys, they learn their. It's They're called, nuts. It's called combat sambo. It's like a. Uh, it's like a mix of like jujitsu and judo and all this stuff. But the, but um, those guys are all killers that come out of there. So, but it's it's nice to have a fill have a Philly yeah. guy. It'd be a big, big UFC name because ever since, you know, Eddie Alvarez was the guy back mm-hmm. then and you had Paul Felder too, who was a local guy and he retired. So now you needed somebody to kind of take the, uh, the mantle of like the Philly guy in mixed martial arts. Chris Dawkins spelled D-A-U-K-A-U-S and he's going to mm-hmm. fight on December 18th when he'll take on Derek Lewis. How yeah, about Dawkins? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's uh, a Lithuanian. Yeah, I think you're name. right. Yeah. Dawkins, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Two uh, AU, two AUs in one last name, you know. So. <laughs> that's a, that's an instant tell right there. All right, Kev, we appreciate it as always, man. Yeah, appreciate anytime. it, man. All right, take yeah. it easy, guys. All easy. right, there he is, Kevin Kincaid. Yeah, I love the idea of having a drop-down menu on Crossing Broad for Aton. You know, and all his jobs. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> all right. We're going to late for a timeout. We'll take a couple minutes here and uh, smash that like button on the YouTube channel. We'll be back with more nonsense. And, uh, you know, we got uh, Devin Caney coming up at 1230.